They are the movers and the shakers, the dreamers and the doers, teachers, athletes, musicians, activists, entrepreneurs. They are the men and women that have made and continue to make Huntington Beach such a special place. I'm Chris Epting, and these are the legendary locals. Bill Kettler is a true Huntington Beach living legend, as he was born and raised in this town. Bill and his wife, Marge, raised two sons and a daughter here, but this only begins to tell his story. Bill Kettler, as I said in the intro, is certainly a legendary local, not just here in Huntington Beach, but all over the world. Uh, Testament is the title of his memoir, Bill Kettler's 98 Years in Huntington Beach and the World. And uh, not a lot of people could have a title like that, Bill. On the back, we say, uh, born in 1922 on a farm in what would become Huntington Beach, Bill Kettler has spent almost all of his 98 years in his hometown. Now, you've got to update that a little bit because oh, you're now 99. Yeah, 99. Soon to be 100. Hope so. And Bill, you are just, uh, like I said, certainly a legendary local, mm -hmm. but very few people um, can, can we sit and talk to and hear from who knew... Tom Talbert, who knew the Slaters, who knew the Newlands. These were people you grew up with, people you were friends with, people you worked with. When you look back over your life in Huntington Beach, what are your first memories? My first memories are, uh, at the time, uh, my father and mother were lima bean farmers, and uh, we lived on Heil. But shortly after I was, I would say, four or five, we moved to uh, Springdale. But there wasn't a number of the streets then, it was RFD. Where on RFD Springdale one. today would that have been? Uh, about? Just south of uh, Marina High School. Oh, okay. And there was nothing there then, right? Oh, no, there was... The farms. The, our house, and uh, in that half a mile by a mile, there were three other houses, um, two of them were with, well, three of them were with Kettlers, my uncles, John and Emil, mm -hmm. and we were all in that same block right across from the Metal Art Golf Course. When you were a young boy, you may be the only person left in town to claim this, but you actually visited the Bolshevika Gun Club. Yeah. You went there once, I think, right? Oh, yeah, I went there so several times. Oh, you did. What do you remember? Any any memories? I know you were young, but does anything stand out to you from then? This would have been probably in the early 1930s or so. Well, the one thing that stands out so much is I used to look for Indian artifacts, and they were, there is no real stone um, outcroppings anywhere in Huntington Beach even today. So anything I found of stone was by the Indians. And they use them for grinding and arrowheads and all. And you would like find that. things like where the wetlands are today yes. in after, that area. After the after heavy rainfall, I always looked because that brought them to the surface and clear, and I could pick them up. Yeah. You're, you're, look, you're a collector. I know you've traveled. Uh, Western deserts, you collect turquoise and artifacts and Native American artifacts and all kinds of things, right? You have right. always uh -huh. done that. Yeah. Um, you also, before you found the skeletons near Balsa Chica, you found cog stones, the mysterious notched wheel-like stones that nobody really knows what they were used for. There are some theories about them being used for um, sacrificial purposes or religious icons, things like that. Nobody really knows though. But you found a number of those. You've got some of those here yes. in your home. Right. What do you remember about finding those? Did you know what they were? Did anybody tell you what they were when you found them? Uh, didn't have to know. I mean, I was at one of the four big middens there on the Balsa Chica Mesa. And <clears throat> when I found the first one, I was uh, hunting for whatever there. And, um, I noticed some 50 yards away something shining. So I went over to check it out and it was a skull. So then I went to uh, my home, got a shovel and, and a gunny sack and I came back. And when I unearthed the first one, I found there was two of them. Two there. skeletons. I was very excited because 
He often buried them with personal things such Had as... Had you found the cogstones before the skeletons? Um, I believe I did, yes. Uh -huh. uh, so you find these skeletons, what do you do? You put them in the gunny sack? Put them in the gunny sack and put them in what we call the tank house. The discovery of those yes. later on <clears throat> were, were, was very instrumental in preventing a lot of the development from happening up there because your discovery really identified that area as a burial ground. When you found the skeletons, who did you tell about them? Uh, mostly my family and my friends. Uh, and uh, they would come and see them once and that was enough, you know, for them. And, and, and they you, stayed up in the tank house. And then later when I moved to Huntington uh, uh, City, uh, I had them in the garage until my Indian friend said, you should bury those, Bill, they're not, not being cared for properly. Mm -hmm. And so today, those skeletons are actually, they were buried in unmarked graves where Good Shepherd Cemetery is today, right? Yes, that's true. Out of respect and everything. Uh -huh. But that discovery, when, when the developer came in at a certain point, your discovery um, led to a lot of other discoveries, right? Other scientists yeah, I, came I in. I can't say that I saved the conservancy, but I certainly had a, a powerful reaction because the builders that were going to build 4,800 homes there uh, said that they had done the archaeological study which I don't think they did because I came forward and said, I don't know how many, but I know at least two because I found two. So that slowed things down and they did a study then and they found over a hundred graves. Yeah. So that, like I say, didn't change anything, but it slowed down the uh, building until the conservancy could get together and the trust could get together and finally get the land back so it's protected forever. Again, a remarkable discovery that, that really helped uh, protect and preserve the wetlands. But you also, you grew up during a time where you, you rode the red cars, right? Oh yeah. Uh -huh. In Huntington Beach. You remember what that was like having a train system in the city. Were those fun to ride? Uh, well, I, I rode it very little because it was a mostly a freight car mm -hmm. and uh, but do you they, remember the red cars the passenger cars oh sure how did you uh, like those oh those are fine but i i really didn't ride those because they were you weren't going anywhere, going you, were, anywhere. you were in huntington beach <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> um you also obviously remember metal arc airport you were here for that uh, from very there. very familiar with that because my father was a very good golfer, and he uh, had an opportunity to buy the golf course, and I think it was in the 30s. Metal Arc? Metal Arc, mm -hmm. and uh, he uh, needed uh, money because we, we were that well-to-do. His brother was pretty well-to-do, but his brother also said, farmers shouldn't play golf. <laughs> so he wouldn't lend the money. So that went by, so uh, it was kind of a, a cornerstone. But my father was a, a champion of the course for a couple of times. He was a very good golfer. I never reached that stage, but I used to caddy there mm -hmm. in the old days. Now, Bill, you remember the Pavilion Ballroom. That was a oh, yes. legendary uh -huh. landmark uh -huh. in Huntington Beach. What about the arch in the 1930s that yeah, was across? It was there. You big, remember that as well? Big steel arch. Uh -huh. Yeah, so you saw uh, that. Oh, yeah. Huh. Sure, I was, I was Huntington Beach. <laughs> you remember Huntington Beach. I mean, oil was discovered about two years before you were born, but you probably right. remember all the derricks everywhere throughout town. Oh, right? yeah, they even, we even had out in the farmland, they had a couple of drills, uh, drilling there that didn't find anything. Today, I think they would have found something. The mortuary right across the street, you worked there. Talk right. about your history here in town and what you did back in the late 40s and 1950s. What was your role? Well, when I left the service, which was 45, I guess it was, maybe 46, uh, 
finally living across from the mortuary, I was went back to school, was an embalmer, which you had to take certain tests and do certain things. And uh, whenever there was uh, a murder or a death that was not due to someone having a history of whatever the cause their death, they would do the autopsy at our mortuary on right across the street. That right building street. was sold recently, but it's still there yes. today. Uh -huh. So you would just walk across the street and do that, right? There are old black and white photos of you um, actually investigating a very infamous murder scene in Huntington Beach. I think in the early 1950s, where you can see yourself there at you know 30 years old, right. uh -huh. marking the body on the carpet. It's like an old detective movie. It looks like. And that's what you did for years. Yes. Uh -huh. And then you went into financial planning after that in the 60s. That's true. Mm -hmm. But you think back of your life in Huntington Beach. You've had a school named after you. You were uh, named Citizen of the Year. You have been an active part, an active community leader for decades and decades. Bill, in addition to everything else, you've been a practicing Rotarian since 1949. When you think of Huntington Beach today, how do you compare it to the Huntington Beach back in the mid-1930s when you were finding skeletons <laughs> and cogstones? Uh, it's so vastly different that it's hard to even compare it. It has changed. How many changes have occurred? How many businesses? And, and no farmland anymore at all. Right. Um, it was very, very good farmland. You've really been part of Huntington Beach history almost since the very beginning. I mean, really you are... Uh, huh. Someone who has touched so many different eras here in town. I think that's why we're so lucky that you're not just here, but you're still so strong and so active. You meet some buddies once a week for lunch, right? Still right. to this day on Wednesdays. Uh -huh. You and Jack Clapp and a couple of other guys. Uh, Jack Clapp and Louis Dorigo <clears throat> and myself um, and a friend of mine that lives in Midway City, Joe McCracken. Well, Bill, listen, you're, you, know, you haven't just lived it, you've told your story. Again, the book is Bill Kettler's 98 Years in Huntington Beach and the World. Um, I've read it a couple of times. It's a wonderful book. There are great pictures and stories, and it really is a chance to reconnect with, uh, with a lot of the history in Huntington Beach from a man who lived it firsthand. And, and again, I want to thank you for uh, not just being a legendary local, but always being so generous with your time. I have brought by numerous walking tours through your home <laughs> here. You always welcome us. You tell stories. You share artifacts. You allow people to actually hold cogstones in their hands, which is always life-changing for people. So on behalf of everybody in the city, I just want to thank you and let you know that next year for your 100th birthday, we're going to have to do something really, really <laughs> special. Okay? I hope I make it. Uh, you'll make it. We're working on it. <laughs> I, um, I can't hardly believe I'm this old. It doesn't seem that way, and things just happen. Uh, I, I look at myself as an ordinary person with exceptional op opportunities to do things that are, are really memorable. Um, and I believe everybody should do something for their home place or city and uh, feel I am so lucky. I had a wonderful wife, great children, and uh, have been and seen so many wonderful things that uh, when people say, how did you get so old? I can't figure it out. Uh, uh, I don't smoke, never have. Um, so it's been a wonderful, wonderful place to grow up. It's a great place. Mm -hmm.